Yo, what's up? It's your boy BZ back again with a quick video. As you can see, I'm in the trailer. Not the trailer park, just the trailer. And, um, you know, I'm sorting through everything, getting everything ready. Uh, I'll post a video about that soon. It's like a before and after. It's not too crazy, but, you know, I've been using this trailer so long. It's a little beat up. You know, she got some miles on there. The trailer's body count is super high. Um, so, like, I want to bring it back, you know, update it, give it some new features. And, uh, honestly, like, last weekend on Saturday at Easter Market, uh, we did pretty good and uh, we we had like a semi new booth and it felt so good so this weekend this Saturday I don't know when this video is going up but yeah can't wait to get the trailer out uh, video out can't wait to uh, you know start using this new booth in the city every weekend guys it's crazy um, but that's besides the point today's video is going to be pretty pretty well requested but it's almost like kind of hard to um, like, I don't know how to explain it, but you guys have this question, right? The question is, um, how do I sell my shirts for more money? Because some of you guys, like, you want to uh, sell perceived quality or you maybe want to sell real quality. And you're like, man, I just started. But, you know, if I use these Egyptian cotton T-shirts, uh, I want to sell them for 50 but since I just started and my graphic design looks like shit, my logo might not look that good. It's like, I, I want to use this quality, but, you know, I don't really have any customers that are going to pay me 50 bucks yet because you're an unknown brand. Uh, it took me a while for I could really like sell my shirts for 25 um, and like not really have any pushback at all. Whereas I remember when I went from like five, $15 shirts to $20 shirts, like some haters made a fuss out of it, but it's like, I don't really, I only really care about my, uh, customer's opinion. That's it. But this video is basically telling you guys and girls and days what you can do to make, um, more, uh, money from your products. And whether that's because they actually are good quality or you just, uh, putting them in fancy packaging and selling them as quality because if you guys don't know Gucci isn't actually good quality cotton if you know anything about cotton Gucci all right I'm not gonna get too much into that but Gucci cotton is is pretty similar to Hanes cotton and uh, yeah you should look into it anyways guys it's your boy BZ back again Epion Royal with 100% Gucci Gucci Louis Louis Fendi Fendi Epion and um the first thing I can tell you to, to charge more for your shirts and actually like get what you want is update your packaging. And if you have your shirts on hangers or like say they're at your office or your house or wherever you store them and they're just like out or they're just hung up or it that's trash. You got to fold them. You got to pack them. You got to put a sticker there. You got to put a tag in there. I do all of that. I give my customers um, a little tag on every in, in every package. Uh, in every shirt my shirt goes into a bag with a tag with a size label and on a tag it comes with a sticker too but on the tag it says send 10 of these tags back to us buy 10 shirts we'll give you a shirt free like people do it not everybody does it but there's some people that do it but it brings a little extra value to the people that give a fuck so the people that are going to spend 10 buy 10 of your shirts you should give them a free shirt and they love that you know uh if chipotle had like a you know six burritos free or the seventh burritos free i'd probably go there once a day and just be like fuck it i'm eating for free on sunday so update your packaging guys don't be giving no bullshit packaging. Don't just hand them a loose ass shirt and it's all flippy floppy like that badass movie Flubber. Shout out to Robin Williams. Let's go on to advice number two. And number two is actually offer something of quality. And now by that, I don't mean like it has to be the most extravagant, luxurious, like, you know, that guy at the barbecue that's always wearing the gold print with the gold print hat and the gold print, uh, you know, fake wire buffs. Like, listen, guys. Quality doesn't mean flashy. Now, if you're selling flash and that's why you're selling it for more because you know you're the only one that got leggings, leggings with uh, pizza all over it, go ahead. That's your shit. Sell it for 50 because you know nobody else is selling that. But, you know, when you just put gold foil on, on a Fruit of the Loom shirt, people know and then people would definitely probably never buy from you again. They're like, man, that's junk. What is this shit? Um... But offer good quality. So 
don't offer no tri blend. Offer a good quality, hundred percent cotton. If you're selling it, try to do it in the U.S. If you're if you're located in the USA, try to get a shirt that's made in the U.S. If you're selling based on quality and you want to increase your cost. Um, if you're in a different country, like if you're in Sweden and Swedish people love Swedish products or Swiss products, make sure that uh, make sure that uh, you try to find a place in your area where you can have them manufactured or maybe like find a find a team of females or you know people that can sew and create the pattern like maybe you become the manufacturer and that's your selling point hundred dollars a t-shirt fuck it you might only sell 10 shirts a week but that's a hundred dollars a t-shirt and if you can update that quality and find that little niche market that's gonna give you a hundred dollars and you sell 10 of them a week come on in a week seven days come on there you go boy uh that's a lot of money every single week and uh now you got a real business and now when you get all that money back from the from the products that you sold you can get better quality so now you're like yo at no extra cost we even got the egyptian cotton labels and they're like what the fuck i don't even know what a t-shirt is anymore because i was wearing that bullshit ass you know what i'm saying we're not gonna say no names but anyways Offer some better quality and uh, maybe some embellishments like, you know, hem tags, product labels, embroidery, different things. Maybe a print on the sleeve, print on the back, something different than somebody else. And even if it isn't completely different from somebody else, uh, do your own spin on it. Like if the hem tag is super duper common, maybe instead of getting a woven hem label like everybody else, get like a uh, like a clear plastic fold label that like it looks just like a hem tag goes over the product just like a hem tag but it's clear plastic and maybe it doesn't even have your logo maybe it's just clear plastic and people are like oh shit that clear plastic hem tag uh that's such and such brand i'm giving you guys game if you guys don't use the clear plastic hem tag y'all know nobody does it uh what's it called come on guys let's get with it off white puts those zip ties on everything what's the point of that no point but it's cool right everybody wants to put a zip tie on their fake uh you know, off white. So maybe your brand does the clear, clear, thick plastic. It looks cool, like real 90s hem tag. Or maybe your hem tag is a, a computer chip that every t shirt comes with a free game. I'm giving you guys a fucking billion dollar ideas here. I don't, I don't got time because I'm already picking up hella bags from somewhere else. I don't got time to get all these extra bags, so I'm giving you the extra bags. If you're broke right now, you got a couple hundred dollars maybe, and maybe you don't have a couple hundred dollars, make the clear plastic hem tag t-shirt. It's going to be fire, I'm telling you. And the third, the third way you can sell your t-shirts for more, honestly, is be genuine with your customers. Be transparent. Like these videos I do, I don't know. There's probably people out there to see these videos like, oh, I'm not supporting that brand. That guy, I don't like the way he speaks. But then there's other people that don't even know about me and they find these videos. They're like, yeah, I resonate with him. I'll buy, I'll buy a shirt from him. And for me, it's more important for me to be transparent and not allow other people to dictate the narrative said about me. Rather for me to just put all of my own narrative out there and just be transparent. And if I say some bad shit or if I make a mistake then it's like uh the brand is even more and more human so the more like up highs and lows you go through the more lovers and haters your brand has it's like the more human it is and um if you can bring that into a product that's how you win that's how um you know with the stay royal the loyalty all these things that these brand this epion royal was founded on you know there's people that stick around for that because they, they believe in that they believe in staying true to yourself they believe in being loyal to the people that built you up somebody puts money in your pocket you gotta stay loyal uh and, you know stay true to yourself that's what stay royal is all about staying true to whatever the fuck you want to do and that is valuable so if your product even if your product is like a good quality product um like Epion Royal, I would say is on the, the the edge of like a premium product and like a good uh, like a great quality product, um, but the designs are really downplayed. It's understated and it's more like a staple work wear colors rather than just like doing crazy colors anymore. Like the navy, the red, the gray, the olive green like things that like you'd find in a uniform like staple products beanie shirts it's like that with my story is what gives my brand value 
um, not because I'm using like Egyptian cotton this or putting the clear plastic label on there, putting the glitter foil on there. It's just because I'm like, hey, this is what I'm making. This is who I am. And this is where my money goes. This is what I like to do. And this is what I'm working towards. And these are my hopes and dreams. And people find value in that. And let's say your brand isn't the best quality, but you let people know every time, like you start your product off at a good price. Ten. That's what I did. I started my product off at $10. Wasn't the best quality in 2009, but it was all I knew. So I started at $10, next time 12, next time 15, 15 for a few years, build up the big following that I had in a local music scene and skateboarding and BMX. Okay, we're going to $20, boys. $20 was a standard price for like three years. And then you know what? I started realizing my designs in Detroit were way better than all these other Detroit brands. I'll stand, I'll, I'll literally compete. Like if there was a design contest, like no matter what, you could do a blind taste test. It don't matter. That's how the conf that's confidence I have in myself based on more than like, fuck, like almost 20 years of social or not social media, but graphic design, design, social media, marketing, building layouts on MySpace. Like I've been around um, and all that has value. People see that people know. And when you bring that real value, you can ask whatever price you want. You can live whatever lifestyle you want, but you got to give first. You got to give the quality. You got to give that packaging. You got to give that story. You got to give to the people the product with everything and they will give you the price that you want. It's your boy BZ. This is probably the best video I ever made. I'm out. Bye. Oh, wait. I didn't have to stop yet. Subscribe. Subscribe. It's your boy BZ. I'm out.